Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. Now recently I've gotten a few comments asking about how I care for my quince monitor, really what the enclosure looks like, how I'm caring for him, uh, etc, etc. So I figured instead of answering all those comments, we would just clump it all into one little care video. And of course, just like all my other care videos, we'll be going over the five main care topics, that being enclosure size, heating and lighting, humidity, the diet, and then lastly, what to fill the enclosure with. With all that being said, I guess it's time to sit back, relax, dive into some Quince Care topics, and roll the intro. And then diving into our first topic, we are going to be going over number one, the enclosure size. Now when it comes to the enclosure size for the quince monitor, that's going to widely depend on really how old and how big your monitor is. Now considering most of these guys are going to be wild caught imports or either uh, captive farmed importation, you're mostly going to find them at the size of around 18 to 24 inches. Uh, it's at this size I believe the animal should be kept in somewhere around a 3 by 2 by 3 enclosure. Uh, something enough where you can quickly monitor and closely monitor the animal making sure that there's no health issues, anything like that. Monitor the uh, the poops, any bile movements, seeing that, uh, you know, hey, uh, is, is there parasites? Are there no parasites? Or is this a good animal? As the animal progresses in size, of course, you want to be giving them larger and larger enclosures. Uh, personally, for me, once mine grow out of that three foot by two foot by three foot, I move them into a three foot by three foot by five foot, into which points, once mine outgrow that, they'll be going into their final enclosure. Now, honestly, when it comes to the enclosure size for, you know, adult monitors, I really don't have, like, I think it really comes down to just how much space you can really provide for them. I don't think there's a set number like, oh, make it this big by this big by this big. I think you should really give them, you know, as big as you feasibly can. Uh, with that being said, I guess if I had to put a number on the uh, bare minimum, I would do something such as like an 8 foot by 5 foot by 6 foot just as a bare minimum for them. Um, of course, with these guys being both arboreal and semi-aquatic, you're going to want a very large water feature down there and then also plenty of branches for them to climb on. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Dakota, why are you going through all these pain of just making different enclosures at different sizes as the animal grows? Why not just put that little baby into the full enclosure? Come on, man, you're just wasting money. What is going on? Well, my friend, that has everything to do with the confidence within the animal. Now, I'm not gonna make this a 20 minute video by going all into that. Uh, if you guys wanna learn more about that, I will put a little card right here. However, that, that's my reasoning. I mean, my reasoning is that that uh, that other 12 minute video you have to watch. <laughs> but then moving into our next topic, let's get into it now. Number two, heating and lighting. Much like really most monitor species, quince monitors are no exception when it comes to high basking lights. Uh, of course, with the basking tip for the quince monitor, you're gonna want to aim somewhere around that 125 to 130 degree basking area. Provide enough heat for the animal to properly adjust its food, making sure that there is no risk of food impaction or anything like that. Uh, as far as the other heating goes, much like your ambient temps and night temps, you're gonna want those ambient temps to have a gradient of anywhere from 90 degrees ambient to 78 on the cool end. Then of course having those night temps being somewhere around the pretty mid 70s. You know, these are a pretty warm creature, so you're not gonna wanna have that drop anywhere uh, below 70 to that 60 range. If that is the case, I would definitely recommend supplementing with some additional heating. And then again, much like most monitor species, there's always that UVB debate. Do they need it? Do they not need it? Well, it's debatable. While some people do have success with keeping quince monitors completely without UVB, simply because they're getting all their calcium and vitamins from their whole prey diet, that's not to say that it's really just a, uh, not needed item. It can definitely be beneficial for the animal and hey, if it's beneficial and they're getting in the wild, why not give it to them in captivity? But that about covers heating and lighting. Let's jump into our third topic, which is of course going to be number three, the humidity. Quince monitors coming from the Indonesian tropics, it is very important to provide sufficient humidity for these guys. You're gonna wanna keep that range around anywhere from 75% to 85%, so pretty high on the humidity level. Uh, there are quite a different couple of ways that you can obtain these humidity levels, of course, misting, uh, proper substrate length, a large water area, which you should provide anyway, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, if you guys wanna do learn more about how to keep humidity a little bit better, I did make another video. Yes, you now have to watch 30 minutes of video to learn, but you'll have all the tools you need, so really, I think it's worth it. Pretty much, humidity is a short one. Keep it high, uh, don't let it drop too low, and you shouldn't have any problems. 
Then coming down on our list, we only got a couple more topics to go into, so let's just kick it off. Number four, the diet of the quince monitor. This is the part of the video where things get a little long, or the topic itself gets a little long. Um, quince monitors have a pretty variety, or a pretty diverse diet within themselves. We're talking things like insects, crustaceans, uh, fish, birds, other meat, at least, at least five food items, and we're gonna get into them now. Uh, you know what, I'll be honest with you, the list is actually really long. I'm actually just, um, I'm reading, I'm getting most of my information from this site, um, BranisMolinas.com. Uh, I'm gonna link that site down there in the description because this is actually how I learned all of my care about my quince monitors, but let's get into this right now. So, number one, insects. So that's a variety of stuff, you know, red runners, lobster roaches, dubia roaches, crickets, superworms, mealworms, black soldier fly larva, Wax worms, I think I named it all. Of course, with those insects, you're gonna to wanna to be supplementing with your daily vitamins, that being the calcium and calcium with D3, additionally with multivitamins, just because of the fact that it's not whole prey. Getting into some of our seafood options, we get into the crustaceans, you know, krill, shrimp, crabs, crawfish, of course, adequate size, you want to feed that whole, a couple of mollusks, 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 no, it is mollusks, uh, clams, snails, squid, octopus, octopus people. Now, if you ever thought about this, if people are like, oh man, you know, I don't want to feed my, my bearded dragon bugs, you gotta feed your quince monitor octopus, so, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's just a thing. You can feed them eggs too, so you know, octopus, eggs, hey, who knows? However, the eggs should be fed in moderation. You don't want to feed too much of that. You won't really want to get the variety in there when it comes to the diet. Oh no, we're not done yet, folks. We're literally like halfway done on the diet of the Quince Monitor. Like I said, this is a diverse list. Next up, fish. Now you gotta be a little careful with the fish. Of course, with anything that's containing high levels of like mercury or uh, um, Thiamine. Thiamine. It's thiamine. Thank you. I just, he really likes. What, what are you feeding him? Tropical fruits. There's a bird feeding tropic, beating tropical fruits off screen. <laughs> Say fish I would recommend, of course, the wild caught salmon, rainbow trout, northern pike, tilapia, sprats, perch, cod, eel. Man, there are some wacky ones on here. Octopus, eel, where do you even find this stuff? <laughs> this is a couple of fish options you can do. There's a couple other stuff, of course, some of your leaner meats, uh, ground chicken, ground turkey, of course, in moderation. And then finally, of course, your classic rodents, uh, some pinkies, fuzzy, rat pups, things like that. And then quill, some birds, some chicks, quill eggs, some quills, and some baby chicks. Um, most of the time the monitor is going to be a little too large, or a little too, the food, the food item is going to be a little too large for your monitors, so you will have to cut that up as um, not fun as that is. You get used to it. it, it it's a little bad the first time, but hey, you, you do it three or four times, you know, you, you'll be cutting those bad boys up in no time. Alrighty, so we pretty much know everything we need to know about how to take care of the quince monitor. We got the enclosure size, the heating and lighting, the humidity, and that very, very long list of diet options for the quince monitor. However, we are missing one more, folks, and that's gonna bring us to the last topic today, of course, being number five, what to fill the enclosure with. Alrighty, now as I mentioned a little bit earlier in this video, there are the two most important things when it comes to filling the enclosure for the quince monitor. That's going to be a large water area, and then of course with them being arboreal, plenty of branches. You're gonna want those branches spanning at both horizontal and vertical, pretty much making a monitor jungle gym, pretty much. These guys really do love being up in the air, so you're gonna want plenty of coverages. Uh, of course, my enclosure right now for one of mine is spanning at least, uh, I believe, five or six feet tall, and he can get pretty much all the way up there. Uh, pretty much good way of getting these branches anywhere from sourcing outside. It's not really something you're gonna find in like your local pet shop. Um, at least I've yet to go to a pet shop where they sell, you know, four or five foot logs. However, the woods, the woods got your back for that, man. They, they got the branches all day, every day. And lastly, you're gonna want that very large water feature. Uh, personally, for me right now, I'm just using a large bin. Uh, pretty much just for the fact mine's still in that juvenile to getting to the sub-adult range. Um, as he gets older, I will be transferring into some one of those, uh, what do they call, like the black koi ponds. Of course, I'll be wanting that heated. Of course, right now with the heat bulb directly underneath it, it is getting it warm enough to where it also helps boost the humidity. However, a koi pond being at least 100 gallons of water, you're gonna need a fish heater in there. You're gonna need a filter in there. 
It's a big thing, and it's definitely something you need to consider before getting the quince monitor. You add some dirt, you add some hiding spots, and that's pretty much it, man. Boom! You got your full-grown, nice-looking quince monitor enclosure. All right, folks, there you have it. You got the five main topics you need to know on how to take care of a quince monitor. Now, it's your turn. Let me know what I did on this care guide. You know, did, did I really knock it out of the park, or were some of the area, other care guides a little better than this one? I'm just joking with you. I'm I'm fairly confident this is the only Quince monitor uh, care guide on YouTube. So really, I got a monopoly on this one. It it could be the worst one yet. You got to click on it because there, there's nothing else out there. I guess you could Google it, but you know, reading. All right, guys, and this is the part where I do my outro. Of course, huge shout out to Zen Habitats and. I know, I know what you're thinking, Dakota, you can't possibly bump Zen Habitats for a monitor, it just won't work. That's where you're wrong, folks, because Zen Habitats has made an even bigger enclosure. I don't have the uh, exact measurements on me right now, but I believe it is something like this one right here, uh, spanning at a four foot by two foot by four foot option. This would be great for a baby to sub-adult quince monitor. That's at least a year or two getting out of an incredible enclosure. It's a nice looking stuff, man. Nice looking. Nice, nice doing for your monitor. It's a, it's a rad setup. If you want to learn more, of course, you can go down there in the description and Zen Habitat. Let's get into the other stuff. And I think after 250 videos, you guys got the gist by now. We got the Facebook, we got the Instagram, we got the TikTok, we got that nice merch right there, and we have Patreon. Yes, patreon.com slash dbcbexotics. You get the inside look of my business, DBCB Exotics. You get the first lineup on everything that's been going on, which a lot's going on right now, man. Of course, we're getting back into breeding season finally, so we got stuff like gargoyles being paired, uh, some other crested geckos being paired, we got ball pythons, we got monitor lizards, we got toke gecko eggs hatching, we have a lot going on. Definitely don't wanna miss it. There's some great tiers going on there, folks. You can get first dibs on babies, discounts on babies, or even discounts on that incredible merch you just saw. I don't know, like, what was that, 15 seconds ago? If you saw that and you're like, hey man, I wanna get that, but it's a little too expensive, now, now's your chance. <laughs> You can start that off as, as low as $1 a month. Your name also gets me in the outro, the outro that we are gonna roll right now.